Welcome to Ethiopia Today. Our presentation covers the following topics. Ousted Sudanese envoy to U.S. warns Israel against backing coup in his country. Kenya defense force soldiers killed and injured in IED attack in Somalia. Ethiopia to increase its express highways to 1,600 kilometers over the coming 10 years. Zelensky will name and shame the West for not doing enough. The details are as follows. Sudan. Ousted Sudanese envoy to U.S. warns Israel against backing coup in his country. Nuruddin Siti. Fired by military regime that seized control last year says if Jerusalem wants to normalize ties with Khartoum it must do so with the people not the army. The ousted Sudanese ambassador to the United States who was in office, as his country normalized ties with Israel over the past year and a half, accused Jerusalem of backing last year's military coup in Sudan and warned that it was not the way to win over the country's citizens. Nuruddin Sati spoke to the Cannes Public Broadcaster in a video interview broadcast with Hebrew subtitles on Sunday The Times of Israel reported. In 2020 the veteran diplomat became the first Sudanese ambassador to the U.S. in 23 years then was axed after he spoke out against the October 2021 coup by Sudan's top general Abdel Fattah al -Burr. The ruling regime recalled him in January this year but he remains in the U.S. Ties with Israel were not impacted by the coup leading to a feeling among many in Sudan that Israel backed the military providing fodder for those who oppose normalization. Sati also said he saw Israel's hand in the coup and warned that Israel made a mistake. This is not the correct way to enter Sudan. If you want the friendship of the Sudanese people, if you want normalization with the Sudanese people in Sudan, you need to come in the wide front door. From the door of the Sudanese people he said referring to elected officials and the public who voted them into power. Israel and others need to understand that there will be no stability in Sudan as long as there is military rule he insisted. Don't stand with the army that is killing the Sudanese. The Sudanese will not forget it. Sait, 75 said he has no way to get back to Sudan under the current regime. Rather he said that he will continue to speak out against the military rule from abroad. Under the Trump administration Sudan was encouraged to normalize ties with Israel in return for Washington taking it off the list of countries that support terror opening the way for diplomatic relations with the U.S. too. The two countries normalized relations late in 2020 as part of a series of U.S. brokered deals between Israel and four Arab countries, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan and Morocco. Israel and Sudan have since crafted security and intelligence relationships that have seen officials hold meetings during unannounced trips. Sati explained to Khan that in Sudan they were always taught that Israel is the enemy and to oppose its existence. He said that while there was no opposition in the government in principle to establishing ties with Israel, it was a matter of timing and consideration of public opinion in Sudan. He also said there had been no public agreement signed with Israel as was the case with Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates which normalized ties in a ceremony at the White House because of the inherent instability in Sudan. Last month Borhan praised his country's continuing ties with Israel saying that intelligence sharing between the two former adversaries helped arrest suspected militants in his country. Israel has been silent on the October military coup in Sudan led by Borhan and the ensuing unrest there indicating it intended to maintain normalized ties with Sudan. The normalization of ties with Israel paved the way for Sudan to reintegrate into the international community after two decades of isolation under former autocratic President Omar al-Bashi. Sudan was once one of Israel's fiercest rivals in the Arab world. It hosted the landmark Arab Conference after the 1967 Mideast War at which eight Arab countries vowed never to make peace with Israel. The October 25th military takeover has appended Sudan's transition to democratic rule after three decades of repression and international isolation under al-Bashir. The African nation had been on a fragile path to democracy since a popular uprising forced the military to remove al-Bashir and his Islamist government in April 2019. The coup triggered near daily street protests plunging the country further into turmoil. Security forces launched a deadly crackdown on protesters, killing around 80 people and wounding over 2,200 others since the coup according to a Sudanese medical group. Kenya Nine Kenya Defense Force soldiers killed five injured in IED attack in Somalia. The incident happened when a vehicle they were traveling in was hit by an explosive in Garel in Jido in Somalia. Officials said five others were injured in the incident that happened Monday afternoon. This was after the lorry carrying the troops ran over an improvised explosive device that had been set on the roadside by Al-Shabaab militants operating in the area. The lorry was in a convoy that had drawn water from a point inside Kenya and was crossing into Somalia for use when it happened at about 1 p.m. Details of the incident were scanty and the military at the Department of Defense headquarters did not comment on the same immediately. Images of the affected lorry showed it had been badly damaged. 
Officials said the Kenya army troops who were injured were flown to Nairobi for medical attention. This shows the threat of improved explosive devices. IEDs remains persistent in particular areas. Officials said the terrorists are exploiting the low-cost strategy and deploying them near operating bases or main supply routes to attack their targets. This is happening both locally especially in the northern part of the country and in Somalia. KDF troops are among those under Amazon that are operating in Somalia. Their aim is to suppress Al-Shabaab activities in the region. KDF went to Somalia in October 2011. Kenya's incursion into southern Somalia started after the kidnapping of two Spanish women who were working for MSF at the Dadaab refugee camp. The abductions were carried out by the militants who the troops planned to push away under Operation Linda and Chai. Two years later the troops managed to take control of Kismayo port under Operation Sledgehammer. The government saw the attacks as a threat to the country's sovereignty as it targeted tourism, which is an economic lifeline of Kenya. Ethiopia to increase its express highways to 1,600 kilometers over the coming 10 years. Ethiopia plans to increase the length of its express highways to 1,600 kilometers over the next 10 years from the current 301 kilometers Ethiopian Road Fund disclosed Ener reported. Road infrastructure planning team head at the Ethiopian Road Fund, Sadia Bashir said Ethiopia has been introducing such modern roads in some parts of the country. Some of the expressways so far built in the country include the Addis Ababa to Adama, Majo to Hawassa, and Deir Dawa to Dooley. The current total distance of expressways in Ethiopia has reached 301 kilometers, she indicated. The government of Ethiopia has planned to increase the total length of the express highways in the country to 1,600 kilometers over the coming 10 years with a view to expediting the economic and social development of the nation, as well as encouraging regional integration Sadia stated. The plan emanates from Ethiopia's grand vision of 2030, which aspires to make the nation one of the symbols of prosperity in Africa, she said. According to her the express highways are expected to play key roles to enhancing the trade and economic integration with neighboring countries. Sadia further said that efforts are underway to enhance economic integration with neighboring countries by building connecting road networks. In that regard we are planning to build additional road infrastructure to connect the country with Djibouti, Eritrea, and Sudan she stated. Are you looking for professional website and secure web hosting services? If so, you have come to the right place. Everything you can imagine is real. For us impossible is just an opinion. As all our experts are highly professional and friendly, the digital home of your business is in safe hands and no more technical pressure on you. If you require a charity website, we have 20% off. Our team has already delivered great projects with highest standards which our customers always love. We are forward-thinking team and hunger to deliver more and help. Let's bring your dreams into reality. Get in touch today. Contact at ethiopiatodayofficial.org. Germany. German section of Amnesty International Awards Ethiopian Human Rights Council with Human Rights Award 2022. The Ethiopian Human Rights Council is to receive the Human Rights Award 2022 from the German section of Amnesty International at a standard reported. The €10,000 award will be conferred in recognition of AECO's selfless human rights advocacy in Ethiopia which it engages in at great personal risk. According to a statement issued in connection with the award the independent AECO has been the voice of human rights in Ethiopia for over 30 years. Its employees investigate human rights abuses, provide legal advice to those affected and are involved in human rights education. Their advocacy is often associated with reprisals and personal risk. The outbreak of the armed conflict in 2020 in the north of the country especially in the Tigray region makes Aiko's human rights work indispensable. Aiko is the voice of the unheard in Ethiopia, said Marcus N. Biko, Secretary General of Amnesty International in Germany. For 30 years Aiko has been fighting for those affected by human rights abuses. For this, its supporters have been insulted, imprisoned, tortured and even killed. Nevertheless, Aiko never allowed itself to be intimidated. Amnesty International recognizes this courage and advocacy in honoring AECO with the Amnesty Human Rights Award, the 11th time the award will have been conferred. Receiving the award and working with international human rights organizations like Amnesty International is immensely important to us as human rights are universal that need collaboration and solidarity for the betterment of human rights. At democracy said Dan Yerga Hale Executive Director of AECO. We now know, if something should happen to us, Others will raise their voices and stand up for us in solidarity. In Ethiopia, 
The government and politicians suppress many voices of the people in various ways. These voices are not getting the attention they deserve. Amnesty International's Human Rights Award helps making these voices heard by honoring AECO's relentless human rights efforts for 30 years now. Since the beginning of the armed conflict in northern Ethiopia in November 2020 Amnesty International has witnessed gross human rights abuses committed by all parties to the conflict, including extrajudicial executions and sexual violence against women and girls. In Amnesty International's assessment these constitute violations of international humanitarian law, war crimes and, in some cases, possible crimes against humanity. Marcus N. Biko said that the German government must take coherent and concrete steps to deliver on its commitment to a new foreign policy guided by human rights. The mainstay of cooperation with Ethiopia must be the German government's support for civil society. In this key African partner country civil society space has once again been massively restricted. The German government can and must support civil society and help protect human rights defenders. Ukraine Zelensky will name and shame the West for not doing enough. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will ask the U.S. Congress for more military gear when he addresses lawmakers on Wednesday as pressure is on the White House to be more aggressive in its response to Russia's invasion. Zelensky is expected to ask for help in shoring up his country's ground-based air defense system and could make a plea for fighter jets which the Biden administration has rejected when he makes his video address. He will also name and shame the West for not doing enough to defend his country. Politico's playbook reported, although he's also expected to balance out his remarks with gratitude. Zelensky is a heroic figure, and for good reason. People are giving deference to him and people want to say yes to him Democratic Senator Chris Murphy told reporters on Capitol Hill Monday. If I were Zelensky I would ask for the moon. But it's up to us to decide what is in our national security interest Murphy noted. Zelensky could also ramp up pressure on lawmakers to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine which the Biden administration has declined to do out of concern it could escalate the situation with Russia. Lawmakers have been divided on the best level of support to give Ukraine. Ahead of Zelensky's remarks Speaker Nancy Pelosi ruled out a no-fly zone at an event in New York City on Monday. If we were to shoot down Russian planes it would be the beginning of World War III she said, echoing the administration's argument that if the U.S. imposes a no-fly zone, American jets would have to enforce it leading to potential confrontation with Russia. Zelensky offered a possible preview of his remarks on Tuesday in a video call to British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and representatives from Baltic and Northern European countries gathered in London. He expressed his frustration with NATO for refusing to implement a no-fly zone as Kyiv continues to come under fire. Zelensky accused NATO leaders of being hypnotized by Russia. We hear a lot of conversations about the Third World War that allegedly it could start if NATO will close the Ukrainian sky for Russian missiles and planes and, therefore, the humanitarian no-fly zone was not yet established, he said. That allows the Russian army to bombard peaceful cities and blow up housing blocks and hospitals and schools. He asked for separate security guarantees for his country. He also argued the tough economic sanctions the West has imposed on Vladimir Putin his inner circle and Russian banks is not enough. He called for a full trade embargo with Russia for Russian Navy vessels to be barred from ports around the world, and for all Russian banks excluded from the SWIFT financial messaging system. His speech which will be delivered to lawmakers behind closed doors in an auditorium in the Capitol Visitors Center will be distributed to television networks, giving him a platform to also speak to the American public as he makes his personal appeal to Congress. The Pentagon last week rejected an offer from Poland to transfer planes to the U.S. that could then be sent to Ukraine. In his remarks on Wednesday Zelensky is expected to bring the same Winston Churchill tone that he used when he spoke to British lawmakers last week as he looks to leverage his public goodwill with the assistance he wants from Congress. We will not give up and we will not lose. We will fight to the end, at sea, in the air. We will continue fighting for our land, whatever the cost, he told Britain's House of Commons. We will fight in the forests, in the fields, on the shores, in the streets. British lawmakers gave him a standing ovation. Thanks for staying with us. If you enjoyed our presentation, give us a like and share to your social contacts. And also don't forget to subscribe and tap on the notification bell if this is your first time. Please also check on our collection of favorites on the description section below. See you on our next video. Many thanks.